Okay, welcome to this meeting of the joint decision session for the Executive Member for Finance and Performance and the Executive Member for Environment and Climate Change. Member of the public, so I'll introduce myself. I'm Councillor Nigel Eyre, the Executive Member for Finance and Performance. I'm Paul Woodison, Executive Member for Environment and Climate Change. So the first item on the agenda is declarations of interest. I have no declarations of interest. None of them. Item two is the minutes of the meeting on the 16th of December 2019. I'm happy to read those as a correct record. Brings us to item three on the agenda, public participation. We have two registered speakers, one of which is here, Martine Ice. I'll hand over to you. You've got, in theory, three minutes, but I'll be too stringent if you go slightly over. Right, so do you want me to start now? Yes, yeah, go. Ahead. Okay, so um, good afternoon. Um, it doesn't say so, but I'm a member of the Green Party and I'm speaking as your president and as a member of the Green Party. Uh, I would like to thank you for the opportunity to speak today on this subject. Uh, I would like to applaud the Council for its decision to consider switching the re to a renewable tariff under the Council's contract with Enpower. It's the kind of divestment from harmful and environmentally damaging use of fossil fuels um, and it's essential to do that to reduce the Council's carbon emissions, of course. And it uh, demonstrates the Council's commitment to the declared climate emergency um, a declaration, which I also applaud. Um, I understand, of course, that the Council is limited because it's in a four year contract with Um I would, uh, I therefore understand that you can only change within that contract and not beyond it. Um, but in the long term and post that contract, um, I would encourage the Council to use in its buying power to support companies that only invest in renewable energy, such as Ecotricity and Good Energy, but there are others. Um, these are companies that take the climate emergency seriously and do not maintain any degree of fossil fuel burning uh, to aid their profitability. If the UK is to reach their modest carbon neutrality goal of 2050, and that target is in any event too late, and action is necessary to reach carbon, a zero carbon much, much earlier than that, then we must move away from reliance on companies that continue to burn fossil fuels in the name of profit and with little regard to people's health and the good of the planet. As I understand it, the contract with Empower comes to an end in 2023. I hope that the Council will use the time between now and then to negotiate with and through the Yorkshire Purchasing Organisation uh, to ensure that the next contract will be based entirely on renewable energy from the start. But at the same time, it's important that mechanisms are put in place that provide real opportunities for those companies that only provide renewable energy to compete effectively for that kind of contract. I would like to thank you for this positive step in the right direction and encourage you in the future to chart a bold path towards zero carbon York. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, your comments have been noted and we'll take those on board. I mean, thank you. Speaks to agenda item four, which brings us to agenda item four, which is the Green Energy Tariff. And I'll hand over to Ian to introduce the paper. Okay. Um, this paper is related, uh, seeking a change in the current tariff uh, on the electrical supply contract. Uh, we entered a new new contract with NPower uh, the 1st of April 2019 for four years uh, and within the contractual arrangements we have, we do have the opportunity to switch tariffs to a green electricity, electricity tariff. Uh, the, the paper sets out um, the, the existing tariff arrangements at the moment in terms of how uh, they, they supply uh, elect elect electricity in terms of using uh, coal and natural gas and, uh, and other f fuel sources. Um, the, new, the, new, the green tariff is slightly more expensive. Uh, currently we paid uh, 12.42 pence per kilowatt hour and the new tariff will be 12.47 
uh, pence per kilowatt hour, which would potentially have a, an overall impact on, on the budgets in terms of £7,000. And paragraph 12 within the report gives a breakdown of where those costs lie. Not necessarily all of those rely directly on CYC uh, revenue accounts. Um, uh, so the, some of the comp, some of the costs relate back to schools, which is a separate budget. And again, your explore is the library service, which is a completely separate organisation. But those organisations do piggyback our uh, contract arrangements. York Explore have uh, confirmed to me that they are willing to uh, move with us to a green tariff. Um, and we've yet to have formal conversations with schools yet, but we'll have those uh, start and commence before April. And, that, and uh, we, we don't, we believe at the moment, the majority, if not all, will switch because the, the overall impact on their budgets will be a similar level to your Explore libraries in terms of 100, 200 pounds at worst case for a secondary school. So. The figures are based on uh, the consumption figures that we had for 2018-2019, so the numbers will move marginally depending on the consumption figures going forward. Um, but overall, it's, if, if you're in agreement, it does provide you with uh, significant uh, benefits in terms of meeting the council's plan that you've uh, set out for 2019-2023. So, any questions? Obviously, it's a joint decision session now. We'll have an argument with my finance portfolio. They're screwing for 7,000 while you're trying to argue for renewables, but <laughs> <laughs> I suspect that might not happen. <laughs> Any questions that you comments you'd like to make? The comments I'd like to make is it's a really thorough paper. Thank you for all the work that's, the, all the work that's been put behind it because it's not an easy thing to do to a contract within a year of setting it up. So, thank you ever so much for doing that. There's an awful lot of work going on inside of your area, inside of procurement and inside of um, the finance area. So just to let you know, we're, we're not stopping here. We are continuing to do an awful lot of different work. So we're bringing in the FTSE for good in terms of where some of uh, the investments are going. And we're looking at lots and lots of other different areas to make sure that the sustainability message is delivered. But delivered in such a way that we can afford it. Because it, it's all well and good racing ahead, but if we don't bring people with us, you're already there, which is fantastic. But if we don't bring people with us, and also if we can't afford some of the other services, we have to balance things up. So they're all my comments, and I'm delighted to see it. And I think it's a very small cost for a very significant step. I was surprised at how little cost it was. Actually, in terms yeah. of that. <laughs> it makes well, financial sense as much as everyone else. But I think the paper makes it quite clear that the rate has come down considerably over over the last last year or two. Well, one of the questions I've asked procurement is, you know, in terms of where we're commissioning work for residential care and the other areas in adult social care and, and child social care as private providers, can we ask them as one of their ways of being on the framework, can we ensure that they have got a sustainability policy and that they do buy green energy? So they're looking at how they put that into their contracts. So we have the recommendations of paragraph five on page five. Uh, happy to accept those as written. Yeah. Okay. And you'd be surprised now I have no urgent business. Therefore, I'm happy to declare the meeting closed. Fantastic. And again, thank you. It's okay.